Warning, Tomb of Annihilation spoilers ahead. We rejoin Nala the Druid, Torin the Paladin, Zaley the Ranger, Badakas the Rogue, Keshma, Zandala, and Boblia after Badakas was possessed by the trickster god spirit of Unk, the Flail Snail. It feels like something is in Badakas' stomach. It's making Badakas unable to decide. Does your stomach normally talk to you? Sometimes. Ever the investigator of rooms, Nala pokes around Unk's tomb and finds a secret door hidden inside an alcove that previously hid a minotaur skeleton. The room she finds contains a wooden cabinet with a numbered dial at its top, set with ornate metal spokes. Beneath the dial, a pendulum swings inside an open compartment. An egg-shaped stone adorns the pendulum's tip. The egg-shaped stone is actually an artifact called the Navel of the Moon, a wondrous item that allows you to always find your way home to your loved ones, no matter the distance. Before we continue, please make sure you've subscribed to my channel. It helps me out a lot. Hey, Torin, Barakas, Zaley, come look at this clock. Does Asarak say anything about clocks? Don't think so. I don't know how it opens. If it opens, suspicion. But I guess cannot decide what to do. It turns out there is an invisible metal door guarding the front of the clock, but the rest of the clock compartment is made of wood. Torin, smash please. Torin smashes the compartment open and Nala easily retrieves the navel of the moon. The invisible key Zaley found in the last episode would have unlocked the compartment, but I much prefer this creative solution. After leaving Unk's tomb area, the party finds Keshma and Zandala waiting in the hallway, conversing quietly. Wow. You are finally done with that place. I thought I would die of old age. <laughs> they take their time, Keshma, but they get things done. Not rising to Keshma's jab, the party heads east and discovers a room that has a grand staircase. There is a mechanical rumbling emanating from a dark shaft that sits open in the middle of the chamber's floor. Four stone pedestals surround the shaft, each featuring a tiny slot on its side and watched carefully by a four-armed gargoyle. Oh great, gargoyles. This is what separated the Gokai from his party. What? You have the letter, remember? Oh. Looking further into the room, each gargoyle appears to be contained within a square made of metallic tiles embedded in the top of the pedestal on which it stands. Each pedestal has a different color tile. One is copper, one is silver, one is gold, and one is platinum. I am Barakas. Please insert chicken. Like a lime chicken? Are you sure about that? <coughs> no. But I guess cannot decide. Zaley examines the pedestals and peers into the slots that open to their insides. With her amazing dark vision, she can see the slight glint of coins, indicating that a toll was once paid to these pedestals. But is this toll still enforced? The consequences of being wrong could be disastrous. However, Nala decides to head down a small corridor connected to the gargoyle room and sees a large, green devil face mounted on a wall. Painted murals show humanoid figures in various states of horrific pain. They're grabbing their heads and ears? They could just be grabbing their ears. Who knows? Oh my god! I am Badekas. Please insert chicken. What, Nala? It's a lizard, and it's alive! It's true! A small lizard has scrambled out from the devil's face, and it can speak druidic. The little lizard was awakened by a Chultan druid, and the company of the Yellow Banner captured it, making it go ahead of their party in an attempt to trigger traps. These mother have a lot to answer for. It's not often you're mad over things. These Good that they died. Zaley examines the pained humanoids more closely and sees that there's a cleverly hidden lever amongst the mess of paint. She gives the lever a yank and a door opens up to her right, leading into a cramped cell that emanates a lot of heat. The walls are painted to depict volcanoes erupting with lava. Death to fire. There is a human skeleton embedded in the opposite wall behind a mounted iron sconce that has a candle burning on it. Nala is completely uninterested in this find and heads to the opposite wall where she finds a faceless figure holding its arm in a weird position. Nala mimics the gesture and suddenly the wall descends into the ground, revealing a dusty passageway beyond. The paintings on the walls depict humanoids fleeing a dark star that strikes down any creature it hits with rays of light. This was a very bad decision. Hey, Zaley, want to come look at this cursed wall? Okay, I'm not going in there, though. I am, but it goes, please insert chicken. Can someone get him some chicken? 
Torin? I can't make tasty chicken. Is bland chicken okay, Buttercus? Buttercus can't decide. Bland it is then. While Torin conjures up bland food, Zaylee tires of her surface level investigation of the sketchy Death Star room. She heads back to the heat room with the fire candle. Torin, back me up. Okay, one sec. Torin arrives in the room just as Zaylee moves over to the candle and blows the flame out. Immediately, the door behind Zaylee and Torin slams shut with a deafening thud, though no noise can be heard from inside the room. Nala rushes over to the lever and pulls it, but she reveals an empty room with a relit candle. That's bad. What has happened to Zaylee and Torin? Have they been wiped from existence or merely set back? You'll find out soon. As always, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button and smash that like button. I'll see you all next time.